Good afternoon, everyone. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. Good afternoon. Praise Chicks, thanks for joining us. Frank Gogo, thanks for joining us. Ogochuku, thanks for joining us. God bless you. God bless you. Today is the 13 of our 30 days fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Pastor Colin, God bless you, man of God. Today is day 13 of our 30 days fasting and prayer. Father, we thank you for how far you have brought us. I just want to play this song, and that is by um, 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 Shirley Caesar. It says, Jesus, I like calling your name. Because why do we pray? Who do we pray? We pray in the name of Jesus. Because today, we are looking at when do I pray. Hallelujah. So just let's bless the Lord with this song. And if the Lord lays it in your heart to share this on your page, please do. Elijah, Olasuji, God bless you for joining us. Hallelujah. But I just want us to give God praise with this song. Hallelujah. While I share. Jesus. Calling your name. Jesus. Jesus. Every day. Your name is the same. Jesus, Jesus, hi Sue, how are you? Calling your name, Jesus, Jesus, every day your name is the same. Yes, Lord. God bless you, Ekon. Thanks for joining us. I just want to share this on my page. Jesus. Jesus. How I love calling your name. Jesus. Jesus. Every day. Your name is the same. Amen. Yes, Lord. Pastor Amara, God bless you. Jesus. Every day, calling your name, Jesus, Jesus, every day, your name is the same, Jesus, Jesus, how I love calling your name, Jesus. Jesus, every day your name is the same. Jesus, Jesus, every calling your name. Jesus, Jesus, every day. Your name is the same. Nicole, God bless you for joining us. Sister Norma, God bless you. Femi Peters, God bless you. Calling your name. Jesus. Jesus. Every day, your name is the same. Jesus. Hey. Jesus. Every day, your name is the same. Hallelujah. God bless you. Happy Monday. God bless each and every one of you. The name Jesus. Yes, Pastor Mara said, the name Jesus is a powerful name. Child of God, can you think back of 
how many times that name has delivered you that name has set you free that name has been your mainstay in the morning in the afternoon when men and women turn their backs on you the name jesus was your mainstay child of god today i'm excited because God has brought us this far. Ebenezer has brought us to day 13 of our 30 days fasting and prayer. And we are in his presence. We are glowing. We are rejoicing. The power of the Holy Ghost is moving us in this divine fast. And I'm telling you that each and every one of us will have something to testify to the glory of God for his mercies, for his kindness. You see, today what we are dealing with is when do I pray? But this song came into my heart and this song is also part of the prayers we are praying today. And it's all about the name of Jesus. And this song says, If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where will i be where will i be i don't know about you but i know about myself if it had not been for the lord on my side tell me where will i be standing where will i be and I know that is also for you. If it had not been for the Lord who had been on your side, when men rose up against you, when circumstances rose up against you, tell me where you would be. Tell me where I would be. They would have swallowed us like food. They would have thrown us into the dungeon. But if it had not been for the Lord on our side, Tell me where will we be? Where will we be if it had not been for the Lord on your side? When the doctors gave you a prognosis, where will you be if it had not been? For the Lord on your side. When the debtors came to take their money and you didn't have it, where will you be if it had not been? For the Lord on your side, tell me where will you be? When the storms of life came, where would you be? When the trials and tribulations came, where would you be? Child of God, where will you be? That's why we have the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. The powerful name of Jesus. The healing name of Jesus. The deliverance name of Jesus. The name that is higher than any other name. The name that causes demons to tremble. The name that is glorious. The name that has kept you the name that has elevated you the name that has given you power strength even when you couldn't move on if even when you couldn't you didn't know where to turn to if it had not been for the lord on his inner side tell me where will she be where will she be if it had not been for the lord on your side tell me where will you be where will you be when the storms of life looked as if it was gonna drown you when men rose up against you when tongues rose up against you if it had not been for the lord on your side tell me where will you be where will you be when church members rose up against you when and as the spirit of adonijah came into your ministry and they took half of your members away and they slated you they said all kinds of negativity against you if it had not been for the lord on your side tell me where will you be where will you be 
when your marriage broke down and everyone looked at you, how are you going to survive? How are you going to continue in the things God has called you? If it had not been for the Lord on your side, tell me, child of God, where will you be? Where will you be? When the children were going haywire and it looked as if all the training, everything you have invested in the children looked as if it was as if you did nothing. Child of God, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, tell me where will you be? Where will you be when it looked as if they were going to foreclose your house? There was no money to pay for your mortgage. There was no money to pay for your car notes. There was no money to do things that you were meant to do. But the Lord showed up at the last minute. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, tell me where will you be? Where will you be? When they said you would not get married, when they said nobody will take you, when they said, let's see how far he or she can go. But the Lord showed up at the last minute and gave you a husband that even knew if they told you to write the kind of specification of a husband or a wife that you're looking for. Yet God showed up in his mercy, despite everything, your flaws, your inadequacies, he still proved himself as your God. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, tell me where will you be? Where will you be? Somebody just lift up your voice and begin to worship the Lord, begin to thank him. Say, Father, I worship you. Father, I bless your name. I thank you for the name of Jesus, the name that is higher than every other name, the name that has kept me, the name that has sustained me. And uh, Marvin Sanguti, man of God, God bless you. Apostle K Kiruki, God bless you for joining us. And um, Harry Beckway, God bless you for joining us. Just worship the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you for the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your mercies, for your kindness. And Nicole, God bless you. Oh, it's going to come, woman. Believe me, believe me. That husband, that relationship that will give you joy. God is in the business of releasing singles into their marital destiny. I'm telling you that it's going to happen like a flashlight. You see, People of God, even as we are blessing the name of the Lord, you see, the moment I put pictures of my timeline, I was receiving phone calls of, wow, how did this happen? Wow, even people are now asking, when is the next singles conference? Let me tell you, may God do a testimony in your life that would make people want to say, let us follow you to go and see the God of miracle. Let me tell you, yes, on Saturday, I'm still in euphoria over the wedding of Saturday, you know, I'm so excited decided that God has proved his calling upon the life of my sister Evangelist Vivian and the ministry God gave her because when God told her that it is not right that there, are, there is an epidemic of singleness, people mocked the ministry, people laughed at the ministry, people said hey, uh, that um, you people are appearing desperate, but now we are seeing the fruit of the ministry, we are seeing God connecting singles, this is the and they, I said there's going to be an other avalanche of singles, divorced, separated. God is either going to mend marriages or he's going to put them apart and bring the right kind of husband that you and him are you and her will grow to old age serving the Lord. Not just a husband, but a husband that you and him will serve God together in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's look at our topic. Father, we thank you, Father, even as we go into your word, even as we, we, we draw insight into when to when do I pray. Lord, I pray that you give us revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. I know some people will say, what do you mean when do I pray? I can assure you that there are people that do not know know when to pray. You see, a friend of mine, to the glory of God, she's an apostle. 
So she was sharing with me how she gave her life to Christ. And she said to me, woman of God, I was a woman that was into cult. I was into so many things. So I did, I, but I just loved Christians. I just loved to go to the church and, and so, and then be a blessing to ministry. But I was so deep into the things of the, of the underworld that I couldn't that serving God was totally difficult for me. So she was now saying that but one day when the Lord arrested her, you know, she said the day she, she went to the church, the power of God was so strong. She said she was in a kind of cult that in that cult, any the kind of powers they gave them was that you can go into any office, any place, drop a tender, drop a contract letter. The people will only take your contract and they'll only take your the um um you know when people put in tender in contract that whatever amount she puts down there they do not question she said she had this ring that she used to that she would wear and that ring cannot touch the ground there were so many rules concerning the the secret cult she was in she said then she was in nigeria she would go to abuja you know and any place she goes in once she walks in with that ring Anything she requests for, they will give it to her. But when the Lord Jesus Christ arrested her, you know, she now shared with me that she had to give up the ring, um, denounce all the commitments she had with this kingdom of darkness. So she shared with me the first day she prayed. She said she just went to have a shower, wore one of her best dresses and sat down and crossed her leg. And she was like saying, the God that Pastor Sosa so and so prays to, I have come to you. I just want, you know, she said she was just talking and she didn't know how to pray. So you might, it might amaze you that there are many Christians or people who gave their life to Christ and they wouldn't even tell you that I don't know how to pray. But she said the Spirit of God came upon her and showed her so many things and moved her. And she said while she was sitting there and talking, she said, I don't know who you are. Um, the God, the Jesus I gave my life to, if you are if you are real, show yourself to me. I want to know more about it. Just was just how simply she was praying. She said, suddenly, the Spirit of God now carried her to when she was a child. She now started seeing everything she was she did wrong as a child. She said she had four abortions. The Lord showed her. And, and she said, as she was seeing all the iniquities, she said, even as a child, when she stole um, and chicken and meat from the um, parents' pots of food, how she lied. She said the Lord took her back to her past and brought her forth. She said the more she was looking at this thing, it was like a television screen. A TV screen was put in front of her and she was seeing the chronology of her life, right, from when she was a child, when she joined the secret cult every single thing i said the more she was seeing this thing that she was bloating and bloating and bloating and the moment she she now saw when she gave her life to christ everything just calmed down so we need to know let's look at the bible and see what does the bible say about when to pray and i wrote here that there is so much controversy on when to pray remember i'm reading from our new book prayer jumpstart please Download your copy. This is a book, a must-have. Someone that just gave their life to Christ today can just follow this book. It's a book that is so childlike yet very powerful. It's a book that can help someone that just gave their life to Christ. It's DIY. Remember I said it that prayer jumpstart is DIY. You will find God for yourself. You will be a prophet to yourself. You will be a voice to yourself. God will use you to open your mouth and speak into your destiny. And with the prophecy you speak, you see how um, how um, Nicole said, believing for that in August, and so shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I said, there is so much controversy on when to pray. However, there are there are Bible references of when to, what prayer, when to pray, which is number one. The Bible says in Psalm 105 verse 4, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. So number one, when do you pray? Always. There is no time limit. There is no time structure. The Bible commands in the book of Psalm 105 verse 4. Because as you begin to win souls, the next Christian is going to ask you, when do I pray? How do I pray? These are basic questions that you think you may know. You need to 
back it up with scripture. You know, I always tell people that my prayers are backed with scripture. Anything I do in life, I back it with scripture. Even when people prophesy into my life, I go back into the place of warfare and I war with those words. I look for scriptures that back what people have spoken over my life and I begin to pray about it so that the manifestation can come. Edwina, God bless you. It was so nice seeing you on Saturday. God bless you. Um, humble Abazu, I don't want to call that name unless I can call it properly. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Amen. So Psalm 105 verse 4 says, pray always. Seek the face of God always. Always make prayer a lifestyle. I've told, I've said it before and I continue to say it. A man or a woman can, that can pray is a man and a woman that can overcome any circumstances of life. You know, I always tell people that even if the devil puts me in the pocket, my prayers will open up the, the seams. You know, you know how a pocket is well seamed. Even if the pocket has a zip, as the enemy zips me inside the pocket, my prayers would make the zip break. I must break out. Praise the Lord. And Janicoli Grace, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Such a long time. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. And the second time you can pray is Psalm 88 verse 30. You can pray in the morning. You see, we are spirit beings. You know, as you grow in God, everyone has their prayer altar. Everyone has their prayer time. But one of the things I realized when I came to England, when I came to, um, and a lot of us that live overseas, we can see that sometimes our prayer pattern differs based on our job, our career. And sometimes even like when I was growing up as a child, in my house, we used to have 6 a.m. prayer. My father made sure that the whole family came together at 6 in the morning and we all prayed. And that was because we're in Nigeria. And we also used to have 6 p.m. prayer because my dad would come back. My dad worked in the government. So he finished work around 5 o'clock. He worked in the island. We lived we lived in Ikoi. So he would come down and before 6, his home. So we had, I grew up with 6 a.m. prayer and 6 p.m prayer and i also grew up sometimes when we're having a fast or night vigil even though we had a church <clears throat> in my house when i was growing up we had a chapel my father dedicated a room it was full of all ink all instruments we had the piano i could play the piano as a child so we all had all the music equipment in my in my in our house when i was growing up so we all used to come together to pray with my dad would wake up midnight prayer 3 a.m. prayer. I prayed so much as a child that when I went to uni, it was like, Father, thank you for deliverance. You know, as a young girl, you know, from a from a church family, you know, sometimes there could be so much prayer, prayer, church, 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 church. But you see, the good thing about a family, when your parents put you in the, no matter how you run away from God, God will still bring you back. All five of us in our family are all serving God in different capacity. My eldest brother is a bishop. Because why? Anything you hand over to God, God will always keep it. My father always said it that all my children must serve God. That we're a Levite lineage. And to the glory of God, God is making it come to pass. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. So it says in Psalm 88 verse 13, but I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Hallelujah. It, David was saying, in the morning, when I wake up, my prayer comes before you. So for some of you that are working and you know that there's a bit of difficulty getting up in the morning to go out to pray, and maybe you're getting ready for work, you can pray. You can pray in the spirit. You can pray in the shower. You know, whatever you need to do. Pray always. Praise the Lord. Psalm 5 verse 3 is a specific. It says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. And somebody said that when you pray in the morning, before the evening comes, God begins to send answers to your prayer so it's very important for you you know and you know we we are spirit beings so when you understand your spirit being you know that at all times prayer is mandatory number three point says three times a day when do i pray some people pray three times a day the bible says in psalm 55 verse 17 evening morning and noon will i pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice 
So you can pray three times a day. You can pray in the morning. You can pray in the afternoon. You can pray in the evening. For me, I use my phone as a lamb because this is a, I mean, a nation where it is very easy for the devil to make you prayerless. So I have a, an alarm and most people that are around me, they know that they always hear my prayer alarm. Even if I'm at work, I just always say a word of prayer at certain times of the day. Why do I do that? I have to, I have to be conscious. You know, there's something called you consciously prepare yourself against the wiles of the enemy. It's very easy for you to be too busy to pray. Even as a minister of God, if there is a group of people that don't pray as much anymore, it's ministers of God. Church members even pray more than the ministers because of the bureaucracy, the administrative work, the pressure of ministry, um, um, rent to pay, this to do. Church members, a lot of our pastors are going through so much. So I always set an alarm. What does the alarm do for me? It reminds me that daughter of Zion, you need to pray. So I always try to pray as my alarm comes on. I pray spontaneously, but I also pray, use my, my, my phone and the alarm on my phone to help me so that I pray without season. Somebody shout hallelujah. I.K. Jacob, God bless you. Oh, yes. God bless you. God bless you, Edwina. Vando, God bless you as well. Number four, pray without season. Psalm 77 verse 2 say, David says, In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without season. My soul refused to be comforted. So imagine David all night, this was how his hands were. He said, my hands were stretched out. Either his hands were in the air, either his hands were at the side. He said all night he was crying. Even me, myself, there are times when I pray, I'm shaking my head when I'm going through, you know, I'm, my background is deeper life and CSC. So in CSC, Christ Apostolic Church, we, where we had all these, um, our elderly mothers, some of them could not even speak English, but when these mothers begin to tear the scripture and pull out prayer points from this they will say her will you not pray you open your mouth father in the name of jesus your head every part of your body is shaking 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 you're praying pray now i look back i'm like father i thank you for that training those military training we had in the place of prayer you know there is nothing there is no there is nothing you do on your journey of christianity that is wasted somebody shout hallelujah so sometimes when you see somebody shaking their head hey my father my god this problem this situation don't say the person is mad though. don't say the person out there was why is this person praying like this is god deaf look at david praise the lord look at david the bible says in psalm 77 verse 2 he said, in the day of my trouble, everybody has a day of their trouble. Everybody has a day when you say, my father, the Bible says in Psalm 20, may the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. There is a day of trouble where you say, hey, I remember some years back, my, my son was less than a year and I was in, I was at the, I was at the, um, I was in Woolwich, praise the Lord. And the sun was so hot. And my son had a temperature and I was pushing him in the push chair and I was at the, you know when your mother is pushing a baby? Suddenly this boy started having convulsion. His eyes went right in. At that point in time, I forgot I was a nurse. Praise God, Sister Lola, how are you? God bless you. Amen. At that point in time, I forgot I was a nurse. I started saying, gee, hey God. Child of God, may our day of trouble be our day of deliverance in the name of Jesus. So fortunately, there was a walking clinic. I just grabbed my son. Thank God I was with my daughter and my son. So I quickly, we ran up. I was like, I am a nurse. This is my baby. I was praying in the spirit. Every my son, his eyes were going in. His teeth, I don't know if you've seen convulsion, although convulsion is not dangerous. But it's scary. It's as if the person wants to give up because the child is stretching. The child is like getting as if the whole body, the breath wants to come out of the child. Come and see me running. Hey, hey, hey. I said, no, Satan, there is no child that came out from my womb that you can destroy. My womb is blessed. Every child I have birthed, they carry great destiny. You are not permitted to come close to them. And child of God, that was the day, my day of trouble. And the Lord delivered us in the name of Jesus. So many times you see people praying and they are so intense in their prayer. Look at David. 
He says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hands were stretched out in the night without ceasing. All night his hands were stretched out. He said, my soul refused to be comforted. Praise the Lord. He said, my soul refused to be comforted. So when trouble comes, it's the time for you to say, my, you begin to remind God of his scripture and say, Lord, I refuse to be comforted until you bring a change of story, until you change my circumstance, until you change my situation. You see, he said all night. So David was a man that, that took part in night vigil. Amen. He prayed all night. So many times when you see people that carry greatness, when you see people that God is using mightily, this is the secret of champions. They pray all night. They say, God, this ought not be. This ought not remain. Father, let my change come. They stretch out their hands. They move their head. They lie on the floor. They stand. They walk. They say, Lord, arise as a mighty man of war. Every battle in front of me, every word that the enemy is speaking over my life, Every situation of Father today, I declare my change of story. Lord, I pray anywhere, any power, any force, I command, let the powers of darkness, every, every gate man holding this situation captive, I command them to lose their grip, lose their grip. Let me tell you, you can pray that prayer for 30 minutes, one hour. That is what prayer does. That is when to pray. Praise the Lord. And number five, I said you can also pray at night. Psalm 134 verse 1 says, Behold, bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Some people come to night vigil and they are falling asleep. I can stand it. You should know how to stand. That is standing in the house of the Lord. Pray it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Olayinka, thanks for joining us. And Deuteronomy 9, verse 25. It, you can also pray day and night. All these things you can find in this book, Prayer Jumpstart. And Deuteronomy 9, 25 says, First, I prostrated myself before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. I kept prostrating myself because the Lord has said he would destroy you. Amen. Did you hear that? He said, I prostrated. That means for 40 days and 40 nights, this man was on the floor, crying out to God day and night so that he would not destroy. May we understand the depth of prayer and make prayer our lifestyle. So sometimes when you're in the church and you see somebody just lay on the ground, it's, Bible, it's biblical, praise the Lord. It's biblical. I pray that this book, as you read it, you begin to have more insight into prayer. And I wrote here that I strongly advise, although because of our various circumstances, we may not be able to strictly adhere to all these. It is important that Christians know that at all times and at every opportunity, it is important to pray. If you're in a relationship with someone, you relate with them daily and as often as you possibly can, especially when you know that it is intimacy that brings closeness and clarity to your relationship. May the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. May the Lord use these words that has come out from the mouth of his, of his servant to edify the body of Christ. That you and I will continue to be men and women who pray at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. There's so much you can learn. Just get hold of the book and God will bless you. Today we are in day 13. The prayer points for day 13. You see, this book, Prayer Jumpstart, is a two-in-one book. It teaches about prayer and it also has 30 days prayers for to jumpstart your prayer life. So after learning so much about prayer, when to pray, how to pray, prayer postures, you may not adhere to all of them, but knowledge is powerful. Because when you have those that knowledge, it helps you. It helps you nurture. Because what God is raising this season is leaders of leaders. Because each and every one of you that has joined us, you are we are all leaders. There are flock that God would put under your care. There are people you will lead to Christ and the Lord will give you that responsibility to nurture them to a place of rising, to a place where they are fully established in Christ. It is 
things like this that you would use to support them, to speak to them. When they call you with childlike questions, you would answer them and tell them, this is the scripture. Because I'm somebody that, I don't know, some of us that are intellectuals, we like to see scripture concerning anything. You know, we move by the spirit, but we, we love scripture. So one of the ways you can help a newborn Christian or someone that is growing in the things of God is anything the Lord reveals to you, even a dream, even a word, go and search the scripture and attach those words to scriptures. Like now, if I come to someone, the person tells me, woman of God, when do I pray? When do I pray? And I show them scriptures that back the words I am speaking. They are more inclined to follow those rules. They are more inclined that even if they feel that I, I don't need to pray all the time, when they see somebody else doing exactly the same thing, they will not feel as if, oh, what is this person doing? Because a lot of the times people judge, they judge out of ignorance. They judge out of ignorance. Praise the Lord. You know, I shared, was it yesterday? <clears throat> When Peter was held down, there was a there, there are different kinds of prayers for different situations. When somebody is in a life and death situation, it is not a prayer of, oh, God bless you. There is something we call voluminous prayer. When you have a child that has learning disabilities, some kinds of illnesses, it is not a one-off prayer that delivers that child. It is voluminous prayer. You keep praying, and as you're praying, God is improving and changing the prediction of the doctors. There are different kinds of prayers for, for different situations. Praise the Lord. There are times the Lord will tell you, I remember when we came back from Uganda. Was it Uganda? No, from Scotland. Myself and Evangelist Vivian, so much virtue left me. The Lord put me on a seven-day dry fast. I couldn't eat, and I didn't know what the Lord was doing because many times you go out on missions, there's always a backlash. So instead of you just going around, the Lord can just seclude you, seclude you and put you in seclusion. And I'm a nurse, so there's something we call seclusion. When things are so, when something is so, a patient may be in danger or may be endangering other people, then we just put that patient in seclusion and lock up the door so that, the, so that we can settle the world. Sometimes God can take you away into the place of prayer. I remember last year when the Lord said to me, gather a few women, you um, a few people, let's take them to Ashburnham and let you guys go. For two days, we were praying and interceding. Nobody felt hunger. They said to me, woman of God, I've never experienced this in my life. You know, many people have fasted. They said, when you are fasting by the Spirit, when your fast is supernatural, you will not feel hungry. Rather, the Lord will be downloading secrets to you. We left and we came back from Ashburn and there was torrential testimonies. I pray that each and every one under the sound of my voice will have that intimacy and that love for not only praying, but for leading others in the place of prayer in the name of Jesus. Many churches that you see that are struggling, go and check their members. They are not praying. I said it on, on, on one of my posts. If you only pray when you're on Facebook Live or when you're about to preach or when you're in the congregation, you are spiritually lazy. And when you are spiritually lazy, it is not a crime. Just come to God and say, Lord, I struggle. I'm, I'm, I'm very lazy spiritually. I need your strength. Praise the Lord. It's, you know, many times people feel too proud. To, me, I tell God anything and everything. You know, I remember a day my daughter, she was having a challenge with some of some girls in her, in her class. They were all getting into arguments and all that. So I now told her, sweetie, it looks like you're jealous. And she went like, mom, I think so. And I said, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to overcome that jealousy so that you can celebrate your friends. I think she was like 12 or 13 or 11. I was teaching her self-awareness. I praise the Lord. I was teaching her self-awareness because sometimes if I'm, I'm, thank God I'm a psychiatric nurse so I can study people psychologically. If I didn't kill that attitude in her, she can grow up and anyone she sees that is doing well, that's why you see in the body of Christ, people are so jealous of each other. They are jealous God is using you. They are jealous God is giving you vision. Jealous Because when they were young and that spirit of jealousy was coming up, nobody put it in check. There's nothing wrong in saying, Lord, 
Help me, I'm lazy spiritually. I'm lazy to pray. I'm, I'm too talkative, Lord. I'm too physical. Everything, I want to check it out. I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm too nosy. You know, it, 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 these are attitudes that the Holy Ghost can heal each and every one of us of. If only we come to him in humility and say, Lord, I struggle with this. I struggle to pray. I only pray in church. Help me. You see, when Jesus said to that man, have faith in God, the man looked at the, the, the word called faith and he said, Lord, help my unbelief. He cried out to God that, Lord, help my unbelief. Ingrid, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Blessing, okay. Um, Pastor Fifi, thanks for joining us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God can heal us of spiritual laziness because God wants our churches to be on fire, our members. Because when you and I are standing in the gap for our pastors, when you and I are standing in the gap for the shepherd, his wife, his family, the church becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And the man of God will be gliding on the grace that heaven is releasing because you and I are praying. Praise the Lord. May the Lord hear us in the name of Jesus. Today is day 13. And our Bible reading and meditation says, I mean, Genesis 31, verse 42. If some of you go and listen to the song we had in the beginning, the song was say, calling the name of Jesus. And I sang the song. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, tell me where will I be? Where will I be? And that is really what today's prayer point is all about. Genesis 31, verse 42 says, in fact, if the Lord of my father had not been on my side, the God of Abraham and the fearsome God of Isaac, you would have sent me away empty-handed. But God had seen your abuse and my hard work. That is why he appeared to you last night and rebuked you. Praise the Lord. This was Jacob speaking to Laban, a very wicked employer. He said to me, if he had not been for the God of a God who had been on my side, the God of Abraham and the fearsome God of Isaac, you would have sent me away empty-handed. There are some of us, situations would have sent us away empty-handed if it had not been for the Lord. There are some of us, they've taken your picture you know, many years ago, I actually called the father of this girl. The Lord opened my eyes to a man of God. The daughter was not married. And in the place of prayer, the Lord showed me where this girl had her wedding dress. And some women came and snatched that wedding dress from her and said, you will not get married because of what your father did to us. For years, I couldn't share that because I was asking the Holy Spirit. There are some people... Some men, they, they have so hurt some women. They have so dealt negatively with some women. And this woman has placed curses on their daughters. Some men have used some house helps, done all kinds of evil atrocities. And these girls have said, because of what you did to me, no girl in your family will succeed. That's why I tell men, always try to break out of relationship in peace. Praise the Lord. Because what I wanted this man to do was to restitute. If he knows women he has hurt, if he knows women that he has, he has abused with his position as a pastor, as a man of God, he needs to do restitution. Because this, when words are spoken, they begin to look for lives to hang on. Pastor Mary, God bless you. Till now, this beautiful girl is not yet married. And I spoke to the father. You know, sometimes some people look down on some of us. Maybe they don't know how far God is using us. And, you know, when you tell them a word, this is what God is saying, they'll just go like, well, I'm praying. I'm already praying. So, so what are you talking about? So that's why even you that is single, begin to pray. I will not eat the sour grapes of my father. I will not, I will not pay the price for what I do not know anything about. I release myself by the blood of Jesus. Whatever my ancestors have done, that is waging war against my marital destiny, against my future, against my life in the name of Jesus. And wives, women, once you've had a child for a man, begin to pray for that man. Stop hating him. Praise the Lord. Stop hating him. 
Hallelujah. Because you have a child, there's a lineage there. And God wants Holy Spirit begin to cover that child with the blood of Jesus. That the powers of the of their father's house, the powers of your own father's house will not affect the, the, the destiny of that child. Because let me tell you, child of God, life is a mystery. Life is spiritual. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was why when Laban wanted to destroy Jacob, do you know what happened to him? God appeared. That is why I say a man and a woman that can pray. Do you know how many people God has given hot slaps over your life while they were busy plotting against you? Do you know how many people that have gone backward in life because of the words they spoke against you? Because God around you is a mighty God around your life. The minute they open their mouth to utter wickedness against you, angels descended and put them in profitless hard work. They tried it the first time God dealt with them. They tried it the second time. They say, you know what? Leave this person. They are too dangerous to be handled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, you would have sent me away empty-handed. And that is the work of the enemy. The emptiers. The emptier. There are, there's a power called the power of the emptiers. What do they do? They make you labor in vain. Maybe one of these days we're going to leave prayer points about laboring in vain. You will not labor in vain anymore for your children, your career, your marriage, your home, and all that concerns you in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you see? Because Jacob was a man of prayer. He even knew that God appeared to Laban in the night and rebuked him. I tell people that God is the highest seer in the whole world. When you are hooked up with God, nothing takes you unawares. When you are hooked up with God, no man or woman can do anything because you will even see God punishing that person. Praise the Lord. One of us, you know, many times I share testimonies and let me tell you, I'm a counselor. Every word I speak here, some of you know me, I don't speak anyhow. This lady, her husband went to Nigeria to go and remarry and she didn't know. But in the place of prayer, not only did he marry, he impregnated the lady. In the place of prayer, God brought that lady and a heavy pregnancy. And the Lord said to her, whatever you want to do to this pregnancy, do it. If you want to kill it, kill it. And the woman said, no, she would not do that. She picked up the phone, called her husband and narrated everything. Shortly after that, the lady gave birth. That is the power of prayer. Prayer transcends nations. Prayer has no geographical boundary. Prayer can go into the grave <laughs> and exhume what belongs to you that has been taken away. Prayer can go into the camp of your enemies and their prayer stones will hit the forehead of your Goliath. Prayer can bring back things the enemy has stolen from you. Prayer can cause judgment to come upon the head of your stubborn enemies. In prayer, you enter the courts of heaven and you begin to demand justice over your life. Look at what Jacob said. What Jacob said. He said, that is why he appeared to you last night and rebuked you. Do you know how many people God has rebuked on your behalf? Do you know how many people God has rebuked over your destiny? Child of God, prayer, a man, a woman that can pray is a man or a woman who will go places in life and would never be put to shame in the name of Jesus. When Psalm 124 verse 1 to 7, praise the Lord, and it reads, if he had not been the Lord on our side, let Israel repeat. If he had not been the Lord who had been on our side, when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have, would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters in their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord who did not allow their teeth to tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from the hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Praise the Lord. If you had not been the Lord on your side, where will you be? When the enemy came, when they wanted to use their teeth, their evil words, they spoke against you, they lied against you, they conjured against you. But God stood for you. I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus that God will fight every visible battle for your life in the name of Jesus. As many of you that are trusting God for a divine husband, the, what the Lord said to me is that before the end of this year, 
many of you will be gloriously married in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you. May the Lord help your unbelief that suddenly you will hear the voice of God and you will gloriously enter your marital destiny in the name of Jesus. As many that are trusting God for a new job, a new career. Father, I decree before the end of this fasting and prayer, Lord, let your people enter into that job, that career that will glorify your name, that would, that would cause them to be kingdom promoters in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as many that are on this altar, as many that, are, that have joined us on this mountain, Lord, whatsoever that has appeared like a difficulty in their lives, whatsoever that even the, the enemy has said they can not achieve whatsoever that in their family line no one has been able to break through my father my god the creator of the heaven and the earth the one that said call unto me and i will show you great and mighty things that you do not know the one that said ask and you shall receive knock and the door shall be opened lord we call upon you this moment in this hour in this moment of watch lord we decree that father that which your people desire you that said in your word that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. The one that you that said in your word that you will grant the desires of the righteous. Lord, arise in your mighty power and answer and bring testimony in their lives in the name of Jesus. You that did a miracle for me yesterday, in, in on Saturday, in Woolwich Arsenal, where I lost all my stuff are in the train station. You that be released and dispatched an angel to take my bag and take it to the nursing, to the, to the, to the supervisor's office. Nothing was missing. Nothing was broken. Father, right now, I release angelic assistance to begin to assist your people into their testimony. I release angels right now. Recala Boko Center. Has somebody open your mouth, begin to release angels. I just hear in the realms of the spirit begin to release angels let angels begin to move on your behalf angels will be we release the angels right now to begin to move right now father let there be avalanche of testimonies divine encounters oh god that which they cannot do for themselves while wow, lord begin to move by your spirit in the mighty name of jesus father so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray amen child of god i said the lord releasing angels you know, many years ago, I, I, I share with you a lot of my angelic encounters. I see angels very often. I see them on the high street. I see them sometimes when an angel comes to speak to me and I'm talking to an angel. I know it's an angel, you know, and I see I see some of them even in, in our face of joy office. Angels come in here to request for food. Amen. They come in here. When they come in, you can see that these people are not from this area. You can see there's something. You always feel the presence of angels. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we see gold dust. We see uh, feathers all over the office. And there's nothing that, that brings about that. That is angelic presence. May you be sensitive in the realms of the spirit to see the angels God has released to bring your testimony to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take our prayer points. Prayer point number one. Father, we thank you for being on our side daily. Begin to thank the Lord for being on your side daily. Tracy, God bless you for joining us. Akoma, Ayao, God bless you for joining us. Bishop Justice, God bless you, man of God, for joining us. Just open your mouth. Begin to thank the Lord for being on your side daily. Every minute, every second is on your side. Hearing your prayer, standing with you. Be your shield, be your guide. Lord, we bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer point number two, thank the Lord for he has the final say over every situation of your life. Even you don't have the final say, God has the final say. If their name is not God, they cannot conclude over your matter. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you because you have the final say over my situation. You have the final say over my destiny. Lord, I bless your holy name because the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Father, I thank you because your thoughts towards me are good thoughts. I bless your holy name because your mind towards me is a good mind because you have an expectation that I will end well, that I will do well. I will excel. Father, I bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen. Prayer point number three. Lord, we thank you for delivering us from the power of oppression and wickedness. Begin to thank the Lord for delivering you and I from the power of oppression and wickedness. All the wickedness that was met out against you, the Lord delivered you. He continues to deliver you and he will continue to be delivering you. The Bible says he will deliver you from six troubles and in the seventh trouble, no evil shall come near you. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you for delivering us from the power of wickedness and and from the power of oppression because wicked and unreasonable people they are far away from your life they are far away from your destiny they are far away from your moving forward in the name of jesus the lord is on your side the lord is the one that is keeping you say lord i thank you for delivering me from the power of oppression and of wickedness in the mighty name of jesus so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray amen prayer point number four <clears throat> Lord, we jump out of every demonic trap to enslave us. We embrace the finished work of Christ, which sets us free from bondage and affliction. Begin to say, Lord, we jump out of every demonic trap to enslave us. Whatever that is on assignment to enslave you, be it sin, be it um bad habits, be it disobedience, be it lack of discipline, whatever that is out to enslave us, say, Lord, we jump up from every demonic trap to enslave us. We embrace the finished work of Jesus Christ, which sets us free from every bondage and affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Prayer point number five. Say, Father, this on this day, Father, appear to every stubborn pursuer of our life and destiny. You see, when Laban, God appeared to Laban and caused him to retreat and surrender. Say, Lord, appear to this day, appear to every stubborn pursuer of our lives and destiny and cause them to retreat and surrender their wicked ways from their wicked ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray, say, Lord, every stubborn pursuer, those that said they will not let you rest, tell the Lord to appear, to appear, to appear to them. Let them retreat, let them surrender to Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, so shall it be in Jesus mighty name we pray amen prayer point number six every raging water every evil conspiracy every allure of the world to bring us into captivity we break it and destroy it permanently in the name of Jesus begin to pray every allure of the world anything that wants to make you canal to live like the world you know there are some people that say I'm a Christian I can go to nightclub I can slay I can this child of God there is a demarcation between the righteous and the unrighteous. Your life should connote the life of God. Let me tell you, the way the devil is bringing worldliness and people being so insensitive, we have this hyper Christianity. Everyone doesn't. Everyone is feeling oh, oh, oh. You know, some. I was sharing with a woman of God yesterday. Many times we see some of us, especially our youth, so half baked. Any little anointing that they, they are so insubordinate, they do not know what to, what is called honoring elders you they feel oh i i can i have done one simple miracle so they are like they do, they've not gone through the old testament they've not studied the bible properly they just listen to the pauline scriptures and they are jumping in the air like like headless chickens and you are like looking and each time you want to teach them they have a teachable spirit i pray we have to lift up our youth because the way the enemy is selling them a very false gospel the way the enemy is selling them a microwavable gospel the way these people are lost in fornication lost in all kinds of terrible things that will come there was a young girl that came to me and said auntie this month alone i've slept with about seven guys in the church in this month alone and she's in the church in the body and she said auntie i don't know what to do i don't know what to do to the glory of god i'm very very i don't i keep things because i am someone that is accessible to young people Praise the Lord. Seven, seven, and then people are telling young people, keep dating, keep dating. Not only that, dating is a trap. When you have not recollected yourself properly in the realms of the spirit, you now start being exposed. You know, some of these men, they carry the spirit of lust. If you are not prayerful, when they come across you, you will not know when they will, when they will, they will smite you into, into, into fornication. You think it's just what oh, I'm going for a day. Some of them are, are, are marine, marine spirits. Men, yes, there are men that are marine spirits. 
Any woman they touch, they must sleep with that woman, whether she likes it or not. And they'll be there saying, I'm going dating, dating. And many girls, after they've committed fornication, they're so ashamed. They'll just come to church. They're lifting up hands, closing their eyes, feeling so ashamed of themselves. Praise God. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. They're going to say, Lord, every raging water and evil conspiracy, every allure of the world, that is every trap to, to, to enslave me in the world, to bring us into captivity. We break it and destroy it permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer point number seven. Lord, expose every labor, every camouflage over the glory of God in our lives. Expose their plans and cause them to hear a noise of great dread in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> I shared with you some years, some, I think some years back. There was this woman of God, you know, sometimes there are some prophets, they know, they see the power of God in your life and they want to ride on your grace. They want to ride on your anointing. And the Lord said to me, I didn't attach you to this person. The minute, when you know that they carry the spirit of labor, and is that the minute you step out and begin to tell them, this is what the Lord says, this is what you see. They hate you so much and they begin to slander you. But you understand who you are. You would rather obey God than man. Let us obey God than man. So you're going to pray every spirit of love. And some people are in churches where the pastors are, they are like, uh, how do I be? They are trappers. When you come into their ministry, they trap you in. They don't allow you to be free. The liberty that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. They put you into bondage. They speak about every ministry has a, they, they, they malign people, malign ministry, so that you become so scared that you cannot see the body of Christ as one body. May the Lord deliver the church in the name of Jesus. You're going to say, Lord, and expose their plans and cause them to hear a noise of dread so that they will leave you alone for you to serve God in the name of Jesus. Everywhere they've camouflaged themselves, Father, see away their camouflage. See away their camouflage, the things they used to cover themselves. The Bible says there is therefore now no more condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh but after the spirit. The Bible says that the life Christ has called us the life of liberty. It's a life of liberty. Anyone that wants to put you in bondage, I don't care how anointed they are, break out and break free and be under the covering of somebody who will cause you to walk and achieve a mid you know i always tell people that if a midwife stays with you after 10 days that midwife is a witch some people they birth into ministry they don't want you to arise and shine they want you if you want to pick your teeth you have to phone them prophet can i pick my teeth and the prophet will say wait let me find out from the lord i've always told you that god has no grandchildren it's, it will be a disgrace if myself at my age, I'm still calling Nigeria to speak to my mom, to ask my mom, mom, should I have a shower? Mom, should I have breakfast? There are some people that in, in the realms of the spirit, with all the knowledge and teaching they have, they cannot take a step without calling a prophet. They cannot drink water. They'll say, prophet, this is my bottle of water. Should I drink spring water or should I drink saka? Should I drink this? The, everything they must ask a prophet. You are, you, are, you are a spiritual, I don't know what to call such a person. And sometimes it is this man of God that put that fear in people. Go and check through the book of Acts. When people got saved, immediately they were on the streets. They were winning souls. This day they will put you in a jacket. They will make you so scared. When it's time, you know, there was someone that said, come, let's go on missions. They were like, missions, I'm so scared. I said, scared of what? You have the life of Christ in you. What is in the, what is there? Let's go and win souls for Jesus. They're like, um, missions is a bit different. It's different from, I said, listen, <laughs> the, there's no time. Praise the Lord. There is no time. Any church that does not permit you to go out and win souls, and you think that the only evangelism you do is the souls you want to bring into your church. God is not like that. We are, we are a kingdom. Amen. Some of us say we are what? We are a kingdom. Some nations need our skills, need our talent, need our knowledge, needs the glory that God has put inside us. Some of us need to say, Lord, I want to take three weeks break and go to India and be a blessing to their Bible study and teach them the word for three weeks. Do you know the trophy you are releasing in heaven for giving three weeks of your time? I tell people, 
ask those that know me, Sister Lola is here. All my holidays, I always include crusade and the work of God in, involved. And I pay my trip, even from the time, 10 years ago when I used to go to the, when I went to the Philippines, my ticket to the Philippines was over a thousand something pounds. I used my children's school fees. Praise the Lord. My children were in private school. I didn't pay that month for their school fees. I took everything, bought my ticket. And the blessing is still standing for, for us. Amen. So you have to break free. Let me tell you, what our life is a chronology of step by step. If you don't take the first step, the second step will not take place. Many of us have great calling. You've seen yourself heal the sick in the dream. You've seen yourself lay hands on people and they're falling under the power of God. It is not in your church that anointing will, will break free. It is on the mission field. That is where you will see God use you powerfully and you will come back and say, wow, truly this name of Jesus is working. I tell people, save up money. Let's go out there. There is work to be done for the kingdom. When we went to Uganda, the powers of darkness then knew that some people arrived. Because we do not, we do we, we don't care. We come in a name. We are ambassadors of Christ. The name we came with is the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. The name that's, that is outstanding. Let me tell you, when you go in the name of Jesus, Jesus will not put you to shame. Praise the Lord. I was sharing with some of my friends. I remember when I went to Kenya, I'm still going to write a book about some of my experiences on the mission field. Some of the challenges I've seen on the mission field. And I remember the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. I was on a crusade. The Lord said there was a lady that had a problem on her legs. And I called her out. Praise the Lord. When I called this lady out, this lady started manifesting. I the first thing was that in my heart, fear came upon me. I was like, this wasn't what I thought. I thought well, I was, it was just going to be a simple, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. And Because I've been, I've, the word of knowledge has been coming and people have been delivered. Even a man that, had, that was mentally unwell in that crusade got healed. So I felt this one was a fly case, if it, since it's a problem of the leg. This lady started talking about the dragon spirit and all that. Eh? I spent time, this thing did not shift. Do you know that? It was Bishop that had to come and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you on your knees. This woman bossed her on, the, on her knees, went down. When I went home, I was not asking the Holy Spirit, what happened? The Lord said, I'm still teaching you things about the mission field. That was why when I went to another nation, there was a young boy that was like seven years old. The minute I started ministry, he was bringing out his tongue like a cobra. The more I was praying, the more this boy was manifesting like a cobra. His face, everything, his eyes turned. Then the Lord said to me, tell them to get a bucket of water. I prayed over that water and I told the pastors, the Lord said to me, this is a, a, a wasting spirit. That means there were many people I was meant to minister on. And if I focus on this child alone, I will miss out on the other people. So I now sent the pastors that were behind me and said, take this boy outside and go and give him a shower because the boy was about to die. Do you know that the next day, the mother came to testify that this boy does not sleep at night. That even she forced him to come for the program. He tried to do it. They were meant to take him that night. If you're from Africa, there's something they call, um, I don't know what they call it, but you know there are some children that when they are born they and they are covenanted into the kingdom of darkness, there's a day they die. And that was a day he was meant to die. But God delivered him. If I didn't hear from God, if not that I had that first experience that looked like, you know, I was still growing on the mission field. So do not feel that at every time. Sometimes, you know, then I used to feel when I pray for people and there's no answer. God, what is going on? I'm not the healer. I'm just the instrument. So that was when I learned. And I asked Bishop. Bishop now said to me that when you face a difficult situation where you are binding the powers of darkness and they do not conform, you begin to you begin to, to give instructions. I had to learn that because I had failed. I hadn't had that experience. I remember another time I was conducting deliverance on a lady. She was so big. You could, if you know how chairs are in the church, she was swimming like a snake. And suddenly she started betting children in that revelation. If I hadn't had all these 
experiences. I wouldn't be able to stand. I wouldn't be able to be who I am today. I wouldn't be able to go and conduct deliverance and pray for people and set them free. Well, if you do not start from somewhere, how will you know the power God has released in your life? How will you know the grace that is upon your life? How will it be that it's only your pastor that is doing all the healing, all the deliverance? In you, we are all disciples of Jesus Christ. If God could use, if Jesus could tell Ananias to go and open the eyes of Saul of Tarsus, each and every one of us carry that grace, but we need people that can bat it out in us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we decree, prayer point number eight, Betty Davis, God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to send you a message. We saw the hand of God through you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord increase you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You're going to say, Father, we decree total freedom and rest on every side in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and say, Father, I decree total freedom in my life on every side and rest. The Bible says that the Lord gave David rest on every side. The, your time of entering your Rehoboth has come. You have labored at Seth. You have labored at Essek. You have done all kinds of things. The season of rest has come for your life. Begin to decree. Lord, I decree total freedom in my life. I decree total freedom in my calling. Mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let me be free to do the work of God, to reach out to souls. Father, let the dreams, the visions, the things you have spoken in time pass over my life. Lord, I'm Empower me to walk in that freedom. Empower me to walk in that rest. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Prayer point number nine. You're going to say, Lord, we commit prayer jumpstart and the school of evangelism before you. Build it by your spirit. The gates of hell shall not prevail. You see, the, the, the school of evangelism, we have not really entered into that school. One of the things the Lord said to me is that I want to equip every, even a day old Christian to catch the fire, to go out. You know, it breaks my heart when I see men of God that try to trap people when there, the harvest is many. I told people, if you go on missions, one, your life will never remain the same. There's a sense of humility that you come back with, that your life, your work with God will never remain the same. You will always have a different mindset. You will, even when people see you, they'll know that this person is different. Because when you go and you see all the things you've been reading in the book of Acts come alive in your life, you see, you see God give you word of knowledge. You see the book of Acts come alive. I'm telling you, you will never ever remain the same. You will become a you will become a mission addict. Anytime you want to go on holiday, you will, you will you will incorporate missions in it. Like I tell people, like there's no nation I go to that must that missions is not included. There must be something I must do for the community. I must drop my imprint. The imprint heaven has given 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 me in the sands of time. To the glory of God in India alone, we have two hundred pastors under our ministry drinking from us sometimes uk may be full of men of god that are too uppity they feel they know all the scripture america may be full of so many pastors that feel that who are you to teach me after all, you're a woman after all, you're a this after all, you're a dad there are many you know the lord said to me every soul matter the soul in africa is the same thing as the soul in europe the soul in uganda the soul in them in libya all three soul matters any nation, anywhere you win a soul, it is still a soul. If in United Kingdom in one week, in one month, you have not been able to get one soul, take a ticket, come together. By the grace of God, next year, we are planning a 20-man team that will go with us to Uganda. And they will also go to India. Let's break that ice and go and do the work of God and be a, a help. You know, I always, people tell me you're from Nigeria. Why are you not going to that? I said, Nigeria is full of pastors. God has not released me to Nigeria. Um, I am for of all nations. I do not even know whether I have a nation, a country. I don't do all this, I'm from this country, no. For many years, God never released me to Nigeria. He released me to Uganda. He released me to Rwanda. He released me to, to India. He released me to the Philippines. Because we are all citizens of one kingdom. Praise the Lord. 
So I pray, yeah, Ingrid, you will go to missions with us in the mighty name of Jesus. We will go to missions. Let's let let our life count. I was telling someone that look at the life of Minister Rose that got married. As a single woman, she was holding UK Revival Crusade. She wanted to take us to Copper Box Stadium. See how big her eyes are. She believed that she could carry out a, a crusade in at, at a stadium in West Ham. God found her. A lady called me and said, ah, I should help her find a husband. I said, what do you do in your church? People go and read the Bible, what the Bible says about singles. A single, her heart is towards God. Her mind is towards God. Her thinking is towards God. How she may please God. How she may please God. I told her, go and find a department in your church and work. I said, I'm in the welfare department. I said, that is a wrong department. You're a woman of the word. You should be in the Bible study department. That is where you should be. That is the gift. God. Leave the welfare department for day old Christians. You carry the word. And I told her, within three months of you aligning yourself in the, in the ministry of Bible study, God will give you your divine husband. And I look at the life of that was why her marriage was quick. So I said, ah, and the, the, um, the relationship was 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 um was so short. I said, What are you waiting for? It's time on your side. We are we, a lot of our singles are ready to marry within a week. Look at Rebecca, we didn't have many days our destiny chain from single to marry. All this trying to do to do you, you the Bible says, No, no man after the flesh. All this, I need to know him. I need to have all the money in the world before I can have a wedding. That is why many people are still single. Many people in the process of looking for money to do wedding, they find themselves in fornication. Many of us are not getting any younger. You meet a man that is handsome. You two, you are beautiful. You've been years staying celibate. He's been years staying celibate. What are you people discussing in your dating? Why are you forcing your flesh to be, to be over enduring? If you need to go and get married on a Bible study, go and get married. Leave even some people called me, they were upset that they were not invited. And I said, Look at human beings. If they didn't have money to feed you, imagine if they call the 1,000 group of people to come and they don't have money to feed all of you, you will still be the ones that will say, I went to bed and I didn't eat food. Instead of you to be rejoicing that one of us, God has set her free. I am next in the mighty name of Jesus. You are there, dotting your eyes. They didn't invite you. What a nonsense. Praise the Lord. If you God gives you a divine husband, please, women and singles or divine wife, please, singles, get married. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Let the Holy Ghost do the rest work. And look at the kind of husband God gave our the woman of God. The man she married, his father is a pastor of a growing church. The man himself is a pastor. What a husband in this 21st century, within four months. Hey, hey, This kind God, oh, hey, hey, hey. Can you see this kind of husband? I'm going to say they are husbands. Hey, there are husbands. There are husbands, correct men, men of caliber, men of influence, men that carry God, men that are, that are proud to say, I am a child of God. Just align yourself with instruction. And so be dancing your own and so people are like, did you see how she was so shy she couldn't even kiss her husband <laughs> i was watching it last night she couldn't kiss her husband maybe she doesn't know what kissing looks like or what kissing is like she was like a very small girl she was so shy you could see that innocence and purity why because they did it god's way i always tell singles I the, let it let your wedding day not be a continuation. Let it be a day you say, This is my wedding night. Let me see how that excitement, that euphoria. You can see how shy she was looking. Lord, let me feel shy on my wedding day. Like this is the first day I'm gonna meet my husband. I'm gonna be around him. Marriage is a sweet thing, children of God. And God will give you a man that will make you happy, that will love you, that will love every intricacies of you, that would say, and you know when she was reading her message, I wanted to ask you, why did you make me wait? Oh, love is a beautiful thing. And I pray that each and every one of us will always have reasons to rejoice in our relationships in the name of Jesus. Please let us continue to stand in the gap for our singles I want to see every one of them married off. 
married happily, married to men of God, married to men of evil. Look at how the two of them, even on that day, I was saying, hey, Minister Rose, you and your husband, you look alike. You are now looking like twins, suddenly. And that is how your testimonies will be in the name of Jesus. You could see a lot of wisdom in their wedding. They kept it calm. They didn't over-publicize it. There are some young girls. A man tells you, hi, you're already cooking for him. You're already changing his blind. You're already doing all wifey duties. You're already doing all what, what. You're already posing with him on, on everywhere. Meanwhile, we have not seen any ring. Look at this guy. Within five days, he had proposed. Within two months, he has paid dowry. Within four months, the man has taken his wife in. This is a leader. A man that says, I want this girl. I'm going for her. She has everything I need. She's here. She's my helpmate. I am going. Nobody, nobody con uh, and convinced him. There was no family meeting. Is she your wife? She said, God said she's my wife. Case closed. May that be the kind of husband you will marry. Not the one that will be having family meeting, calling him, what is your intention concerning sister this? How long and he's there telling you I'm still trying, thinking about it. You will not meet a time waster in the name of Jesus. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Let's just thank the Lord. Let's just say, Father, we thank you for answered prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that we have prayed today. It is a done deal in the name of Jesus. Father, so I lift up everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray that, Father, that which they desire, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that, Lord, you will bring their miracles to come to pass in the name of Jesus. I pray for those trusting you, for, for breakthroughs, for children, for husbands, for families to be reunited. I pray for prodigal husbands that have left their homes, prodigal wives that have left their homes. Lord, if it is your will that you will bring them back together, let it be so. If it's your will that you would that day will Will receive a husband a wife after your own heart lord let it be so in the name of jesus because father you have called us to peace lord i pray for everyone that is confused they maybe they have people they've not heard from you they don't know lord is this the man or the woman that you have put in place for me lord i pray that even as they enter those realms of prayer there will be clarity in the mighty name of jesus father you that located rebecca when she was at the well i pray for our singles oh god wherever they are hold up in even if they are in the corner of the corner holy ghost reveal them to their god-ordained spouse in the mighty name of jesus father prove once again that you that gave evangelist vivian the ministry of the two shall be one with evidence of tangible miracles you see and 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 and, and visible proof that your signature that the, your heart beat, you have seen the pain of the singles and you have come down from heaven to do a work of deliverance, to do a work that will glorify the kingdom. Father, we pray that, Lord, we lift the woman of God up, that many singles would testify to your glory, that through this ministry, you have changed their mindset. You have led them to the life of holiness. You have led them to the life of trusting you, to a life of purity, righteousness. You have led them to learn how to wait for you and so that they can get the best of the best the the joy that will have no sorrow the husband that will not be the one that is sleeping around will not be a, a carnal husband but a man after god's spirit lord even as they are waiting on you you are working on their character you are working on their behavior you are causing them to be a worthy man and or woman for your glory in the name of jesus so shall it be so shall it remain in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree that things of joy and celebration will not cease in our lives, that we shall all remain faces of joy all over the nations of the world, that will carry the joy of Jesus Christ to the world, to show them to be exhibition sent of our God, so that men and women will know that this God we are talking about is a beautiful and a wonderful God who does all things good in his own time. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Have a fruitful week. I pray for somebody on this mountain. May you meet your divine spouse this week in the name of Jesus. I call him forth. No matter the nation they are, may they locate you in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. The Lord lays it in your heart to share. Please share. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
Bye. See you tomorrow, 12 o'clock for our day 14. Davida Construction, thank you for joining us. We just ended. You just have to watch the replay. God bless you. Have a great Monday. Ingrid, God bless you. Edwina, God bless you. Sister Lola, God bless you. Um, everyone, God bless you. Have a great day. Bye. Let me put back the song we listened to earlier. It's such a lovely song. I love it. You know, I was dancing to it, you know. Praise. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Calling your name, Jesus, Jesus, every day, your name is the same. God bless you. Jesus, Jesus, I love calling your name, Jesus, Jesus, every day your name is the same. I love the song too. When I felt all alone. Yes. Sometimes I called him in the morning. Sometimes I called him late in the night. Jesus. Jesus. Calling your name. Jesus. Jesus. Every day, your name is the same. Jesus, Jesus, I love calling your name. Jesus, Jesus, every day, your name is the same. It's Shelly Caesar. Shelly Caesar, calling your name. Let me type it. Jesus, every day, your name is the same. Jesus, Jesus, calling your name. Jesus, Jesus, every day your name is the same. Jesus, Jesus, every day your name is the same. God bless you. Have a great day. I hope you've had a great time. Hallelujah. See you tomorrow by God's grace. Bye.